In this Excel video, I will show you the new checkboxes in Microsoft Excel. This is going to be fun. Let's get started. So here I am in Excel. I'm working with a spreadsheet of some employees. And let's say I've been asked to update their information. It would be nice if I could just click a checkbox next to each employee to mark off once I've got their information updated. It's so much easier to do that now with the new Excel checkboxes. So I'm going to click here on insert after selecting the cell that I want to add the checkbox to, in this case F2. So I'll click on insert and checkbox. Now there are some definite advantages to these new Excel checkboxes. One of those advantages is that you can click on a cell that has a checkbox in it and you can apply some font formatting to that checkbox. So for example, what if I change the font size from 11 to 48? You can see what happens. I can change it back to let's say 8 or whatever I want to change it to. You can also apply some font colors. So I can click here and let's say I could make it an orange checkbox or a blue checkbox. So these are some definite advantages that did not exist with the prior version of Excel checkboxes. Okay, next I need to insert another checkbox, right, for F3. Actually, no, you don't have to. You can use the fill handle to do that for you. In this case, I'll click on cell F2 to select the cell. There's the fill handle, the little square in the lower right corner of the selected cell. And if I double click on that, it will copy or flash fill the checkbox all the way down my spreadsheet. Now, in this case, it actually copied the checkbox all the way down the spreadsheet. And not only the checkbox, but also the formatting behind the checkbox. So this green background color that got applied to all of these other cells. I don't really want that. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen. Notice this little button that's down there. If I click the arrow there, I can choose to simply flash fill. Instead of copying the cells and pasting the cells, I just want to flash fill down the range of data. So I switch to flash fill and look what it does. It fixes the backgrounds so that they're not all this darker green. So now I can click to check one of these checkboxes. And I can uncheck it if I need to, whatever I want to do. One of the other nice benefits of these new checkboxes is they automatically are understood by Excel to either be true or false. Notice up here in the formula bar, it says false. But if I check this checkbox, it changes to true. If I check it again, it goes back to false. And so it looks like there's a checkbox in this cell, but Microsoft Excel interprets that as being false because it's not checked. If I check it, now it interprets it as being true. Now, because of that, I can use formulas with these checkboxes very, very easily. So I'm gonna go here on cell H3, and I'll click, I'll type equals, and I'm gonna do a count if, left parenthesis, and then I'll select a range. So I'm gonna count if anything in this range, and I'll just click and drag all the way down, column F, and then I'm counting if that range is what? Well, I'll put in a comma and just type true and then put in my right parenthesis. Now, some of you are probably thinking, why is he not putting true in quotation marks? That's normally what you do with text in a formula. The reason you don't need quotation marks around true is because Excel just understands the state of this checkbox. It's not really text it's showing you. It's actually a value, a value of true or false. So I'm going to tap enter on the keyboard and look, it's counting up in that range all of the check marks that I have. And if I check a couple more, I can go up and it's automatically updating that formula because these check boxes are automatically understood by Excel as being either true or false. Here in the percentage, if I want to, I could type equals and I'll click on H3. So whatever's in cell H3 divided by, and then how many employees do I have listed here? It looks like I have 70. So I'll divide that by 70, tap enter, and then I'll turn this number into a percentage. So I select cell I3, and then I'll go here to the home tab in the number group. I'll switch it from general to percentage. And now as more and more employees get updated and verified, look what happens to the total updated and the percentage. So all of this is so much easier to do now with these newer Excel checkboxes. One more trick you should know about with these newer checkboxes is you can click and drag to highlight a range of cells that have the checkboxes in them and then tap the spacebar key on the keyboard and it will toggle 
the checkboxes on or off. And you can do that for just one checkbox if you want at a time, or it could be all of them or five or six, whatever you need. So in this case, I've selected all of them, tap spacebar, and now they're all checked. So I hope you can see some of the power of these new Excel checkboxes. If you enjoyed learning about them, Look for more Excel checkbox videos in the near future. There are so many different ways we can use these, and I'll be producing more and more videos on this topic in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.